Welcome to the Golf and Fitness Show, brought to you by PGA Tour Active. I'm your host, Corey Gregory. On today's show, we have PGA Tour Pro, Wyndham Clark. By the way, I was looking up the tour distance ratings. Top five, Wyndham. I see you're bombing it out there, and so there's going to be a lot of people that want to know, what's this guy's fitness all about? So I can't wait to get into it. Welcome to the show, Wyndham. Yeah, thanks for having me. Excited to be on. Hell yeah. So let me let me start here. So I'm trying to mesh two worlds here. I'm a fitness guy who just loves golf. You guys are obviously at the highest level. When did it become necessary for you within within your training that like fitness couldn't be something you just kind of mess around with? Like when did you take it like next level serious and then see it apply to the actual course with them? Uh, I actually started at a young age. I, I honestly think I was one of the first guys at least – that I knew growing up that was working out for golf specifically. I started when I was 13 um, with a guy named D Tidwell. Uh, He was a TPI guy based out of Colorado. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's when he was like, Hey, we need to make sure your body is one symmetrical. And then we need to start working on some speed and strength. And we're doing this for, you know, longevity. And so that's when I started and really got into it. Um, But then as college went on you know you kind of work with your your team and when you turn pro it's it's kind of like all right well who do i work with i've kind of done all this stuff and so you kind of have to ask other players and then you kind of find who who you like and that's when it really gets serious because you know i think what i do for working out mainly is for injury prevention as you said i hit the ball far and that's the most important thing for me is to be able to continue to do that Mm -hmm. and to have an engine if you will, to, uh, to be able to do that. So for me, that's number one. And then obviously gaining distance and speed. And then, uh, obviously the, the body that comes with it is, is the added perks. Yeah. The durability factor. And what a lot of guys don't realize, right? Obviously <clears throat> the high level people do, but when you see as a fan, you don't realize like after you're walking five rounds and hitting the ball, like you, the torque, the amount of like mileage, like just to have that uh, general physical preparedness to handle all of that, mm-hmm. you you have to take it serious. And I, I, maybe some guys can get away with it now, but it's it's a must at this point. Most people didn't start at 13 years old. So you would think that should really prolong the ability to be able to bomb it and do the things that you that you do. And it's like sounds like it's just second nature. It's not like something you've thought about for a long time because it's just been a huge part of your life. Yeah, the, the one, yeah, 100%. The one – uh, juggle or, or, you know, struggle that I have is when you're on the road for four weeks in a row, Tough. it's, it's hard because the golf is obviously number one, that's the most important. And so you don't want to sacrifice your energy on the golf course by working out too hard in the gym, you know, either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or after or before rounds. And so that's something as when I turned pro, that was kind of a learning curve for me. You know, my first few events, I was so excited. I was like, okay, I'm out here. I want to do everything. And so I was in the gym every day. And then it would come Friday and I'm like, man, I'm just exhausted. And so Mm -hmm. I've had to learn how to manage that. And and rest days are just as important as, as, uh, you know, days that you're really getting after it. So it's definitely a struggle with how it is for us on tour because you're traveling so much. So that's, that's the hardest part probably. Well, and the balance of that, because when you fly, when you have cabin pressure, your hips get tight, there's all these things that shut down, which a lot of people don't even think about, but then like you get out there and you're not moving your, your turn feels weird. So it's like, have you got certain lifts or drills, um, from a gym standpoint that you're like, all right, I got off the plane. I know I have to hip hinge and do stiff legs and do this. Is there a certain kind of group of things that you rely on? Yeah, so my my whole process starts actually before I leave, uh, even to a tournament. So every off week, I I go and see Greg Roscoff with MAT oh, yeah. in in, uh, in Colorado. So Greg is kind of like my guru, if you will, for my body. So Greg I, is a guru for everybody. Yeah, <laughs> he is. He is. He's, he's the best. So I go and see him, and he gets me to where I feel very healthy in my body, and all my muscles are are activated and working correctly, and then. I work out with my trainer, um, Andrew Hannon in, um, in Scottsdale at PFS. Mm -hmm. And so after I see Greg, then we'll go do, you know, tournament prep stuff. So, you know, there's some strength, obviously components, but there's a lot of speed and explosiveness. And then we want to maintain, uh, the mobility. And so 
we'll get the body feeling really good going into a tournament. And then I will do stuff the day of a flight to make sure that, you know, I'm not going to get too stiff. Now, granted, I get stiff on a flight. Sure. And then when I land, I make sure I do stuff. And then the next morning is probably the most important because I think a lot of golfers will just go straight to the range and just start hitting balls. That kind of sets you up for a, a bad week, if you will, because mm-hmm. that's when guys end up in the trailer, the other trailer, the PT trailer, because they not need the help. one you want to be in. Yeah, <laughs> the PT trailer because they need help. So um, that's kind of when it starts. But I, I typically, my biggest thing is activation. So I think, you know, if you ever talk with Greg and and some of his, uh, I think some of the best in the business. I've interviewed stretch. Greg on here. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so against stretching. And so yeah. I don't stretch. Um, yep. I do a lot of activation. So I make sure my muscles are moving. And, you know, I I carry my own bands with me if I don't have access to something right away. Mm-hmm. Um, but a lot of times I'll get in there and I'll do, um, I will do, if there's anything that seems like a stretch, it's actually more of a, a mobility movement that requires actual muscle movement rather yep. than just a stagnant stretch. Um, but yeah, I, I get my biggest thing is I get the glutes activated right away. I get, um, I have some core exercises that make sure that I'm doing, um, obliques. Uh, yeah, obliques. And so I'm working my core, not only up and down, but also rotationally. Yep. Um, and then I'll do some back stuff cause I want to make sure the posterior chain after sitting in a, you know, a plane like this the whole time, I want to make sure that my body, you know, on the backside is, is activated. And then, and then it's just some movement stuff. Like I'll even just get moving around. I'll do, um, different kinds of jumps or, um, you know, anything that is kind of like gets the, the muscles going like this. Mm -hmm. And that's maybe like the first thing I'll do. And then, you know, obviously I try to get into the gym right away and work out with either my trainer on the road, or I have set workouts that I'll do before I even get there. Just so my body's ready to go. Cause that's when I think injury happens is right off the plane. You know, what's wild about understanding what Greg is teaching is a lot of people aren't that in tune, right? Even to the highest level, like once you start understanding the stuff that Greg is spitting, you can like feel it instantly when stuff is not right. And and that's how I operate. I I do mostly like drug-free powerlifting. And so when I get under a heavy bar, I can tell this adductor's turned off. I need to do that. It's all similar stuff. So when Greg was spitting all that, I was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, and yeah. so you guys understanding that and then knowing, obviously Bryson's made this very popular too. It's like, you knowing that, ah, I need to make sure and get some activation and movement through motion to make sure that all this is working better. That, that's a huge advantage, Wyndham. Yeah, yeah, no, it's huge. Um, and so, you know, a little different than Bryson. I mean, I don't know everything that Bryson does, but yeah. I know he's very much uh, MAT. And I think yep. he does all his machines and that's what he does. And that's obviously isometrics, just isolating yep. one muscle. And which I think there's a huge, in, you know, importance for that. But mm-hmm. I... I also like to do everything. So yep. I, Bryson speed trains, I think, a lot with a golf club. I speed train a lot without one. And so okay. I am it. doing a lot of – I do power lifts. I do explosive um, – I mean, if you ever see some of the workouts that I post, it's it's a lot of stuff of quick change of direction, sure. load into one side, push off of that side, land, and make sure my decelerating muscles can handle all that acceleration and all yep. that stuff so i do a lot of all you know some of it's golf specific but some of it's also just overall body stuff that you see other athletes do in other sports and i think that's huge because being well versed i think just only helps yeah. your body because i think guys just get too like it's too golf and i think yeah narrow and i think that actually hurts your body a little bit because then you're yeah. only used to doing this and and when anything else comes around i think your body freaks out so I, you know, I try to throw a bunch at my body so they can handle everything. Well, let's go meathead for a second. Then what's your favorite, like heavy lifts or size of Olympic lifting? Is it deadlift squats? Like what, what's the one you're like, this is me. Like, I look forward to this. I like grinding through some weights. Yeah. Uh, it's probably, I love trap bars. And so, All right. uh, you know, trap, trap bar, bar deadlift, deadlift. Yeah. Be, for some hip issues. I don't go all the way to the ground. I lift it up mm-hmm. with, um, some 45 pounds, um, plates just so it's a little bit elevated so i'm not sure. as deep into extension mm-hmm. but 
I, I mean, I don't always post the amount of weight I do just cause I get so much backlash with people being like, oh, oh. you're going to hurt your back and yeah. all this stuff. Um, but what I do that I think really helps with that is I have a serious warm up prior to that. And then I wear a belt and mm-hmm. then Andrew Hannah and I, we really focus on breathing into that belt. So I have a very, yeah you know, solid core so that there's no extension in my back. And then I have a big deep breath and then, and we do make sure that each rep is, it's not like, I, I just see so many guys go up and down, up and down, up and down. And we try to make sure each rep is reset. Really, yep. Reset. And Love so, it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we do that. And then, um, he always kills me cause we'll do like some strength stuff and then he'll take me to a trap bar with no weight. Uh, and even like a 35 pound one. And then I have to jump in like mm-hmm. a split, split stance and then we're doing explosiveness and that it's like killer day. But yeah, as far as meathead, that's my favorite thing because yeah, you know we'll get up in the three, four hundred pounds sometimes, and that's it's kind of fun. So yeah, you know what's so wild about you mentioning the belt? A lot of people was wearing a belt <laughs> just out here in the gyms, but actually pushing into the belt, making yeah. your base wider, putting that pressure through your abs, it secures your lower back. It's a thirty to fifty pound difference when people just actually understand how to get solid. You know, oh, from yeah. our powerlifting background, like we're getting under five, six hundred pound squats. Everything has to be so locked in, and people don't realize how much more explosive you feel when you actually use the equipment properly. So that's 100%. that's great to yeah. hear that you that you got that going on. And then the fact of him then changing to the explosive stuff right after. I mean, your body it just it's basically just confusing the nervous system. And that's, yeah. that's perfect when them. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, and, and you know, our prep before that, like I said, we do a lot of breathing, which would be breathing that feeling into the belt. So he gets me in this, you know, our, his whole mentality is this, uh, stack feeling, yep. uh, uh, sensation of your pelvis right under your diaphragm. And so that there's no, you know, so it's like this and not having your pelvis this way so that there's extension. And that puts a lot of pressure on your, your yep. lower back, which is you know, as we know with Tiger and a lot of these athletes that play golf, like that's the spot that you got to protect. Yep. And, um, yeah, so we breathe into that and we do all this core activation and then we get into it. And, and that's, th- those are kind of my fun days when I see him get the trap bar out. I'm like, all right. And it's, it's exciting. Cause you know, I, I don't throw up that much in bench I, and uh, other lifts, but that's the one thing that I kind of, yeah. I like to do some weight. Nor should you really like, uh, I mean, yeah. that all looks cool and everything, but it's like, you know, I would run into pitchers and golf guys and I'm like, it, it really, you know, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that doesn't really yeah. matter. You need no, to do it, it but no. you don't need to be like posting a 315 bench. I mean, that's not no. really helping your sport. <laughs> no, it doesn't at all. I mean, yeah, it doesn't. So we, that, those are, you know, as far as meathead stuff, that's, that's kind of one of my favorites. And, uh, you know, then there's some other explosive stuff that's fun too. Great. So. What's a tournament week look like? You're saying that you're working towards the balance of it. So is it like, you know, are you getting your heavier stuff obviously in the front of the week? If you do do it, have you tested multiple things? Like what, what kind of you settled in on that you like tournament week training wise? Yeah. So I have, I have a lot of guys. So, uh, Dr. <laughs> Dr. Harry Sesse is, uh, he's kind of my PT on the road and I chose Harry. There's a bunch of private guys out here that guys use uh, a lot of great ones. And, mm-hmm. Uh, Harry really, I liked him cause he has also, so he's a PT chiropractor, but then he also does, he has a training side as well. And so mm-hmm. what I have found that works very well is I'll get in typically Sunday or Monday more Sunday night or Monday morning to a tournament. Um, I'll go see him right away and he'll kind of just do an overall look at my body and then we do activations. And so he has me hold and we do some pulsating where he holds like a certain position and I have to activate the muscle. Yep. And then we'll go straight to the gym and we'll do like on a Monday, a movement prep day. That's, you know, it's 15, honestly, 15 to 30 minutes, very fast. I get a sweat going, not much weight seems very like ho-hum, whatever, but it just kind of gets my body going. You're priming it up. Exactly. Um, and then, you know, then I typically don't practice on Monday, so we'll just kind of get the body moving. And then Tuesday is my, like yesterday was my kind of heavy lifting day. We did some trap bar. Uh, we added some weight. We actually did a little bit of bench. We just kind of did a workout day that was about a 45 minute workout, nothing crazy. And then after I work out with him, we do a flush. And so he'll go in and kind of flush the muscles. And then we always end just kind of you know, what Greg preaches is we kind of activate those muscles. And so we do our pulsating. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and then today, so this is a Wednesday, uh, today is I'll go in and work out with him and that's another movement day with weight. So it'll be, um, a lot of times, it, you know, it'd be a lot of, I'd say like walking lunges with a rotation or throwing some balls or pulling cables with rotation, just making sure that it's, I'm loading into the correct stuff, also rotating. Um, and then we always will activate the core. Um, and then we'll, after I play, he'll do a post round flush. So that's where he's doing some, yeah. So he's doing some, it's, it's never to fix anything. It's just kind of like clear the muscles out, uh, and then always finish with the pulsating activation stuff. And then come tournament time, Thursday morning, we'll do a warm up, which is that same kind of thing, activation. And then we always kind of do, um, let's see. So we always will activate my glutes first. I'll hold into like a dead bug. Mm-hmm. And I'll have to hold him pushing me different directions. Um, and then we have a couple other core things. And then we'll go into some like squats and lunges with no weight, just moving. Um, he kind of gets a sweat going. Then I do a couple of maybe either, depending on how he felt my body moving, we'll either have to do some hip thrusts or something that maybe if I need to get the glutes going or if something's a little tight. Uh, and then we'll do, we always do kind of a, you know, like a chest a push and then mm-hmm. turn into a rotation with that and then the same thing with a pull uh and then we'll kind of always finish with pale off presses mm-hmm. making sure that abs are there and then he kind of just looks at the overall thing and then i'm good to go we go awesome. play and then afterwards we go to the flush so it's kind of like a very set routine and um you know my body's been really really healthy since i've been doing that and and obviously I've been getting some good numbers on the course yeah. as far as distance. So yeah. Thanks been, for leading us through that. That's great. Yeah. It's been a great process. And you know, I, my team has done such a good job with me and uh, you know, and Harry has been a key component to that. So I'm kind of a lunge maniac. So when I hear that, I love it. So mm-hmm. my, my thing I started, cause I kind of float back between the drug free powerlifting and, and bodybuilding. And I found out that the walking lunges, I do them for distance as my GPP. So I lift weights in the morning from 4 a.m. to like 5.30, and then I lunge a half mile after every day. And so that's like, so so what it's done is, whether it was golfers that came through, Major League Baseball, whatever, anybody that needs, you know, hammies, glutes, which is, by the way, everybody, you know what I mean? So it's like, um, or any NFL guys, they would come through and be like, man, like when they would get to even 400 meters and not be sore. Like that was just a general, I could go lunge 400 meters. I'm not even sore. This is just how I operate. You could see the lactic acid threshold and the endurance just continue to uptick. So it's really interesting. If you ever try it, make sure you don't have anything close by, yeah. Yeah. but you know, we knock out a half mile knees got a touch good form. 20, 25 minutes is pretty serious. Jeez, so that's gotta I'm, be tough. <laughs> oh yeah. I want to throw that at you just because I wanted to see what you thought, but it's, um, that's kind of one of our standards, which is pretty, pretty unique out here in Ohio. So I thought you'd do yeah. that. Yeah, that is pretty cool. I, I actually do love a good, um, uh, we, you know, we'll do some walking lunges, um, mm-hmm. but I do love like, a isolated lunge with weight and holding, you know, I do a lot with, um, with a kettlebell, uh, do one, there's a bunch of different variations, but I do this with Andrew when I'm home is we'll take a kettlebell. I will rotate into a certain side okay. and then lunge down. So it's very isolated ah. to that certain side. Then he'll make me hold and then I have to breathe and I'll do it for like 20, 30 seconds. And by the end of it, I'm like shaking. And no, then he goes, the right. lunges are so hard. <laughs> yeah. And then, he, then he has me come out of it and I'm like, and he goes, all right, other side. I'm like, I have to breathe. You know, that's, <laughs> so there's a, it's a, you know, I, I do love a good, a good lunge. The lunge pattern works so great for all yeah. sports, really. About the course, what are you excited about? Um, you know, how's your prep been? Yeah, um, so we're playing Quail Hollow this week. It's the Wells yep. Fargo Championship, and it, this is kind of a beast course. It's really long. You hit, uh, you know, for me, most courses just with my length, a lot of my distances are between, like, let's say 100 to 150. Yeah. And this this course is more like 150 to 200. Oh, okay. And, and that's for me, you know, so other guys, it's got to be even and longer. So I, I definitely say I have an advantage as far as distance here. Mm-hmm. Um, with that said, this course is just, it's a beast. A bunch of different guys have won here. Uh, it requires 
clubs into the greens, you're not going to hit as many sure. greens. Um, the greens are very sloped. So yeah, I mean, I love this place. I love Charlotte. It's a, it's a really cool, cool city. Um, you know, I've had actually had really good prep. Uh, the game feels pretty good. And, um, you know, for me today, it's actually kind of fun with playing the pro-am playing with Christian McCaffrey. We grew up together. Yeah. He's also a fitness guru. Maniac. Free. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, his dad was together. so jacked back in the day too. I remember his dad growing up, like oh, collecting yeah. cards. I mean, and Christian's just been amazing in the league so far. Yeah, yeah. Well, even it actually started even back in high school. He was pretty gifted. Like he was just so much stronger than all of us. I mean, he was a freshman in high school, and he looked like he'd been lifting for you know like five <laughs> years. And, and, You're like, and, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's he's always been kind of way. So so that's gonna be fun, and really just I, I really like this place and. Um, you know, but it's, it's a grind. This is not, um, it's not one of those tournaments that, I mean, guys can shoot low here, but it's pretty hard to put consecutive rounds under par. And it's also, it's hot and this is a huge golf course. So that's another thing. I mean, the electrolytes is, is huge, making sure you're keeping up on your water and, um, you know, all that intake is, is also very huge. The nutrition side of golf is is also very important and yep. you know lead I, us through lead us through that that was where i was heading next anyway so i'd love to yeah. hear some about some of your strategies yeah so um you know it's it's kind of in the process of changing i've had you know some stomach issues so i'm trying to figure that out but um typically for me is i, I make sure i always drink a bottle of water before i go to bed uh that's actually kind of a casey martin thing even though he doesn't know much about fitness that much when we were in college at Oregon, he always, every team meeting before we'd go to bed, he'd bring waters and said, everyone has to finish this before we go, go to bed. And, and it's actually, you know, I think about it, I'm like, that's actually pretty good because we yeah. probably could have been underhydrated. It's great to just start hydrating. Um, so in college, probably definitely. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. you, you weren't thinking about it. No. Drinking off the course, whatever it is. You need more water. <laughs> yeah. Um, so... Yeah, so we uh, so I do that, and then as far as my food nutrition, I I I use certain, you know, I either use like I've used this, some sea salts that I put into the water, or I'll, I'll use electrolytes. Um, there's different brands that I'll get that I'll put in there, um, and I probably only have one of those, maybe two of those, you know, before I start, and then one during the round, and then I obviously keep drinking water. Um, I use a macro bar, which I typically eat. Um, kind of like on my fifth or sixth hole, okay. um, always after I hit my first or second tee shot, I'll have like a banana mm -hmm. or some sort of fruit, like an applesauce. Um, I actually have baby food sometimes, which All is right. kind of crazy. Um, uh, but it has like some great vegetables and sure. meats and stuff that is just easy to access. And then just squirt in there. Sometimes it's terrible, but <laughs> it really, it's really, really good. And it's I, fuel, I, man. Yeah, it's fuel. So I'll do that. And then I'll sometimes we'll either have a bigger thing kind of between nine. So if it's a, especially if it's a later round at one, um, you know, you kind of, it's hard because you have breakfast, but then maybe you miss lunch. And so you have to make sure you keep up on your, your carbohydrates and make sure that you have your fuel. So I'll sometimes have like some sort of nut butter with some bread and mm -hmm. some jelly to kind of at least just get some more fuel and then i always have nuts sometimes jerky yep. um and then I, the biggest thing i always tell people is just if you ever get to where you're hungry on the course then you've kind of failed so yeah you always want to just keep munching even if it's just little stuff like you know always throw a few nuts in your mouth or mm -hmm. uh that sounded weird but, but <laughs> um, <laughs> i wasn't gonna say anything when <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> But hey, you know, just <laughs> tell me this though: What's breakfast look like? Because you know, I follow a fasting protocol, but for 15 years, I was huge on breakfast. Some people, but obviously, with the course, is breakfast bigger or lighter? Like from you said, some about maybe some stomach issues. Like, what yeah. are you testing with that? I'm yeah, that's something I'm actually trying to really um, figure out. I've okay. I used to always eat the same thing. I'd always have like a three egg scramble with a little mm -hmm. bit of meat in that, and then I would have some sort of starch. Um, and then maybe like some fruit, but yep. I've been having some stomach issues. So I've actually been messing around with maybe less food in the morning, maybe just kind of get a little something in the stomach, but it's very small and then build into it. I like so, that. That, you know, let's talk when I figure out my stomach issues and then maybe I'll have a little better, uh, 
better program, but I'll tell you my, my, what I ran into because I ate eggs as a bodybuilder every day for like 20 years. And I realized that I had a mild, I had built up a mild allergy to eggs. And so I started having some problems with that. And then when I went to the fasting protocol, originally it cleared all that stuff up. And so, yeah. but obviously I wasn't walking 18 holes and, and doing all this stuff. So it was like, I was really, you know, two hour workout and then going to my work day. But the reality is like those little things, it could be like a 10% allergy, you know what I mean? That they, they yeah. make a huge difference in this level of performance. So I did a lot of trial and error and have ha- been working with that stuff for a long time. So yeah, everything, as soon as you said eggs, it's the first thing that popped in my head. Oh, and then that actually, I mean, I'm about to do all of my allergy tests and do smart. all the blood work to figure it out. Um, Very smart. But, but yeah, I, that could be it because I've done the same thing. I mean, I've been out here now for a few years, but even just before that, I mean, every morning I would have some sort of eggs and that could be part of the issue. And that's probably where it starts. And then I don't feel yep. good as the day goes on. So, um, yeah, so this week, honestly, I'm probably going to really limit the amount of food I have and just do... Maybe like I might even just do like a banana with some nut butter on it and yeah. just kind of that's what just I'm start graze with. during the day and see how you feel. Yeah. And it could be better. So, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Hey, so always we'll trying to take things in and put things yeah. in and take it out. Exactly. Good, man. Exactly. So I, I want to wrap up with this. Um, obviously, you, you went through some perseverance um, with losing your mother as a youngster and everyone's always battling stuff, man. You've been very successful, Wyndham. Everyone goes through things um, of some nature. What did you rely on heavy? And what can you tell the fans that, look, I did these things, whether it's training, whether it's personal development, reflection, like what helped you and continues to help get you through (laughs) something that's that extreme? And I know, obviously, it's so meaningful to be representing your family now, I'm sure of all the things you learned from her too. So just take it away for me. Yeah. Um, probably the, you know, what got me through, I mean, it was a very long two, three years of my life that was very tough in college that, you know, those were some of the toughest times for me. And, um, it was, you know, definitely probably my faith and my relationships. And so I really dug into, um, you know, my, faith in, in Jesus Christ. And, 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 you know, if you don't have that, I think there's just, it seems very hopeless. And, and, um, I just, and I, I felt like that for a little while. And, um, that really, you know, that was really something that, that helped me. And then also I had some really key important people that, um, were there kind of walking me through a lot of stuff that were, um, there, there were older, older men in their forties and fifties that had lived life that had lost things and our people. And they really, um, mentored me and, and really helped me through those tough things. And, and, you know, then as I started to heal, then you kind of, I've, you know, made golf so much easier and, and perspective of life, yes. everything was just so much, you know, I go, I go in and out to where golf gets too important sometimes, but overall, like my golf level it's gotten to where it's not as important as it used to be. And it's like, you know what life and my relationships with uh, my brother and my dad and um, you know, other family members and my good friends, that's more important to me and making sure that I make an impact on this world other than just how I play golf is more important to me. And that's, you know, I think that gives you a better purpose and, and makes, you know, makes the golf even more fun and more enjoyable when you do have success. It's not just about the money and just about the fame and whatever comes along with that. So, you know, those are kind of some key things for me. And um, I've been very blessed to have some great people around me. And um, yeah, I mean, I think trials and hardships only make people stronger. And I think if you can embrace that, yes, it sucks and it's terrible through it. But as someone that's kind of on the other side of that now, I look back and Yes, I want my mom here, and I would never. I mean, I would love to have her here. So. Yeah, for sure. Well, and I, I, I lost my dad um, in a single car accident about ten years ago, and I, I do the same thing with the daily perspective. That was a bad day. Yeah. And everything else doesn't seem like it stacks up, or it's really that serious. And yep. that perspective right there, when you check yourself, when you are getting it too serious, you go, "This is what's really important." I'll get my wedge together. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and I yeah. think that right there, what you just said was beautiful, an amazing way to wrap it up and sharing your heart like that. Just really appreciate it, Wyndham. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on, man. I, I appreciate it. Yeah, man. This is the Golf and Fitness Show. I'm your boy, Corey G. Fitness. That's Wyndham Clark. Have a great day. Share with your friends. Appreciate y'all. Peace.